the reason why I'm making this tape is that I went through about 30 or 40 of my tapes and I could not find one on the subject that's actually very interesting in my research. The reason for this is that 40 years ago, a media gangster from the disgraceful de Grel school of Catholic, military Catholicism named Martin Sheen, a media psychopath, tuned in to me and decided that he could co-opt the powers of the Pope and the powers of the presidents. He announced himself in the West Wing and he proceeded to bleed me for years. It makes me angry to see what my life was, circumstances, how my life was taken from me by this Nazi to just blame me with erroneous, absurd allegations and ignore the evidence for what happened. Anyway, I couldn't find any of the essays or talks that are interesting. And it really chewed me up. So I'm going to make this and give it a conspicuous title and put it at the top so I can find it and watch it. Okay. <clears throat> In the 60s, I was a child. I was born in 1960. I was taught that about the Holocaust of the Jews and believed that we have mature adults in charge of our governmental circumstances. I remember being very confused, bewildered by what happened to JFK. And I was attacked and very brutally tortured and I was never able to understand why no one was ever willing to investigate what would happen to me. And one of the reasons is that this Praetorian Nazi, Martin Sheen, has presided over the media works to prevent it. With all, I mean, he was evidently part of a script writing team. Okay. At some point, um, the liberals, you know, the even Biden is like an executive of criminal, the criminally eccentric, weird, uh, tripped out, truly deranged angling at me that comes to the media. And um, I was investigating things that I'll explain what bothered me. Probably, you know, that D.W. Griffith made an epic, which was the first epic of Hollywood. It was called Birth of the Nation. It was the first time that anybody ever used the Burning Cross in association with the KKK. The KKK went on and adapt, adopted it from this book. And I learned that the people working with him on that film went on to make Reagan's wartime films, in which I was finding very brazen pro-Axis encryptions and sensibilities described and represented. It was futile to tell something like that to the police. Seattle had me banned from college for 12 years, just staring into space sabotaging my recovery from trauma because they they said I was a troublemaker. Well, I eventually got out of Seattle and back to Pittsburgh, and the Danes there read the paper, something nobody in Seattle ever bothered to do, and agreed with me and sent me back to school, and I graduated and made honors. So I was looking at this arc from the creation of Hollywood to the present time with Hollywood. The condition of Hollywood is something I profoundly disagree with President Biden about. If it was up to me, they would close Hollywood. I found so much access sensibilities. They created a super story about the rescue of Adolf Hitler. Yes, they did. It's in so many of their films. A person who everybody thinks is dead getting away. It was a standard theme in film noir. Okay, so 
this ghost person was named nicknamed Casper. The name of the identity that was used to attack me in a plant chain script on me. So I wondered, where does this stuff come from? And I went back to the early era of Hollywood, discovered that a grand conspiracy of Hollywood important people, Sergei Eisenstein, the Russian epic filmmaker, wrote a book adulating Walt Disney, who in turn made cartoons adulating Adolf Hitler. You can't make this stuff up. It's hidden, it's discreet, but it's real. So what I discovered was that they were hiding something that landed on their desks all at the same time. They were protégés of Houdini. This was 1907 through 1916, the year before Einstein's theory of relativity, when the fourth dimensional psychologist Wispensky was around. Wispensky was hanging out with um, Prokofiev, whose set designs involved Picasso. And I wondered who these people were, and I enlisted some librarians to try to help me. And finally, after a long day, I found the name Bly Sanders in a Cubism index. He wasn't a Cubist. He was a literary figure with one arm that he lost from World War I. Maybe even the man in Berlin, Alexander Platz, who, who, who loses his arm, may have even been modeled on him. And he was a celebrated cinema literary giant. He would tell stories in literature the way cinema pretends to tell realistic stories. Like my mother told me that Robert Penn Warren's book, All the King's Men, was about Yui Long, but it's fiction. Blas Sanders would tell real live fictions with things that he had done, giving his name plus things that he hadn't done using his name. And he would blend these things into montages of reality and fiction. And back in the early age of this time, if you go back far enough into time, the origins of fascism in Fumi, which was a contested area occupied by Denuncia, who was a poet and a romantic figure. And there was feminists and gays, and it was sort of, a, it's actually been compared to Woodstock, but it was the birthplace of fascism. Marinetti, who wrote the Futurist Manifesto, which was influential, he introduced Mussolini to D.W. Griffith, the fascist movement in Cubism intelligence in the 20s in Italy. If you go back to that time, there was a period when they all had this idea. Houdini was around, Lispensky was around, Lysandos was operating behind the scenes. And it all landed on their desks at the same time and then disappeared. And I thought they must have adopted the idea. They must have adopted the idea of using an invisible agency to tell a false narrative as a gig for power from the fourth dimensional power structure of media. And that's why you get and upload like rather what you would rather believe in the circumstances of Kennedy being killed in D.V. Plaza. This is something that they pulled. It was a double fantasy situation. It was a double fantasy from the fourth dimensional and, and they, Axis Hollywood came in through the back door and has been manipulating things behind the scenes with these to grow fiends like Martin Sheen constantly. And Shane is so shameless that he'll actually depict himself as one of the Kennedys after being party to their assassination. He's horrible. The whole Axis situation with Hollywood is horrible, what they've done. When you look at their decifiles, and the reason I'm able to see these things so clearly is because I'm deaf. I have to use closed captions. I see the words on the screen. So I can't mistake their double meaning with the images. I can't mistake the pattern, the way people who just passively take in a movie can. So it's been a horrible hardship.
and I can't, you know, and I may have to make this tape because I went through all these tapes and it was all this nightmare reactivity from this sort of criminal derision that gets heaped at me through these violent psychos in our media system. 